and now the final place was Jerusalem to hand it to us. And it came, it was there in the conference, and I don't know, the last day it went up in uh, the pavilion, King of Kings, up to the stage. And we decided, Avi and some of the leaders all said, don't put it in the middle because we don't want anybody to worship. We want it in the back so we understand it, it, what it meant. And uh, so they did, and, and we, we were worshiping. And I'm sitting in the front row, and I could see the ones who had taken it and struggled with it and showed it all over the world. They were standing there, and they were standing appropriately for their uh, culture. But inside of me, I knew in my heart of hearts that they had to let it go. And they had to step down. And they, had, they needed to let the Israelis, because the Israeli dancers led by my daughter, Deborah, needed, it needed to come to Israel, and it needed to be in the Israeli hands prophetically. Not necessarily the, the actual thing, but prophetically. And as I stood there, I went behind the curtain and I asked them to come out. They just looked at me, but nobody, they wouldn't. And they were, I think, on their knees too and everything. And I knew they needed to go. And finally, I came back down and I said, they're not listening to me. And then Avi went up. And I knew, the thing is this, is I knew this was hard. Because, you see, so much had been put into the hands of the Gentile part of the body, and that God was wanting to say, I'm, I'm wanting to raise up this Israeli body to walk with the Gentiles, but they also have to be in that place that I've called them to be. It doesn't mean they're more loved or better or anything. It has to do with a call, a specific call in the land of Israel. And I knew that was hard to let that go. And I actually, in my heart of hearts, I grieved. I said, Lord, help, you know, help them. But I knew they had to step away. They didn't understand this. And when they did, they finally did, because they listened. To, they saw me going and everything. And um, when they did, the Holy Spirit fell on us. We knew the presence of God was there. We also knew it came at a great cost and that they paid a price. So anyway, about the um, right order, uh, the, it, about the order that God has. And, when, and in 2019, when we went to Nutseret, some years earlier, even before 2017, before, and there's no reason for names, but someone came from overseas, strong, uh, beautiful, prophetic, and they love the Lord, they love Israel, and we all went up to Nutseret to the same place. And uh, the person said, you know, this, this happened in Nutseret with Yeshua being wanting to be thrown over the cliff, but it wasn't the time, and he walked away without being touched. And he said, I want to invite all the Christian Arabs to come to the front because we need to repent and say we're sorry. And I knew then, I said, ooh. Um, I knew that it wasn't the Christian Arabs who did this. But, um, and then um, they all went to the front and they, then they prayed and then they started praying. And then the person said, now what all the nations to come up and pray for all the Christian Arabs from Nazareth and everything that lived there, uh, pray for them. And this was a picture that was left when that happened. The Christian Arabs were standing in the front, the nations came forward to pray for them, and guess who was sitting in all the seats? It's the Jewish people were left out. Mm -hmm the Jewish believers. We were sitting there. Because we were not the Christian Arabs from Nazareth, that lived in Nazareth, and we were not the nations. And I sat there and I said, I'm sure in their heart of hearts that they, nobody there believed the church had replaced Israel. I'm sure that they didn't believe that. But yet here we were, sitting there. And it was, it was difficult. 
And what was even more difficult is that the Holy Spirit fell on the Christian Arabs of the nations, and there we sat. <laughs> I know. And I asked the Lord about that. I said, how can something be so out of order, and you're just blessing them like crazy, and we're all just sitting here like this. I mean, I, I want your presence. I want everything. And then the Lord told me, he says, you know, everyone's heart is after me up there. Yes, it's, it's not right. But their hearts are saying, I love you, Lord. He says, and I'm going to meet them. He said, now nothing happened in the heavenlies. Nothing shifted. He said, that's okay. He said, I love them and I met them. And that really helped my heart. So I knew that when we went to Nazareth, I knew we were correcting or something that happened. And one of the things we always pray is God help us because we've seen so many things done in, in conferences and places over the years where the uh, church doesn't always realize how much has gotten in, even though none of them uh, will, uh, you know, believe that God has done away with Israel. But it's been in, in the teaching without realizing it. It's there and it's Sometimes it's very subtle. And so that's what the Lord told me because he sees the hearts and he loves people who love him even when they're making big mistakes. <laughs> and I thank God for that because I'm sure I've made plenty. So anyway, um, also I just want to say, um, Barbara and Norman, that I... Um, what you share in your heart and understanding for Israel is is um, very strong, very good. Yeah. This is why God has also put you in different places in the government here and doing different things for that anointing that's on you and the ability to just lay it out. Because it's difficult to have this laid, laid out. And uh, the teaching and the prophetic uh, uh, governing also here that I see. I just want to ask God to really um, I hope you don't mind that he will actually send you into unfriendly places. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, to bring truth. Because somebody has to, to tell it, tell the truth and speak it out prophetically and to the body here in Australia. And then he will actually widen those tents, your tent pegs, and you will walk in places you never dreamed possible. And I just ask the Lord now that he will do that because um, uh, his hand is on you in this. Thank you. Okay, and that's, that's that. Okay, next thing. Okay, we finished. All right. Um, uh, there has been a project. Our family has... Um, worked on for nine years, eight years, but I think we're heading for nine years, actually. By now we've been saying eight. Um, but there are three things in this project. Uh, a research paper, uh, a book, Bobby has a book, um, and a documentary. And um, there have been times it came uh, it, to a standstill um, but then we would just see God take it and keep going with it. When we think our, it would, all these obstacles would get in the way, but we kept going. So we're close to completion. The English book of the, uh, the actual book should be ready by welcoming. The Hebrew book, and I believe also the research paper, is, is closer to being done. It's in the publishing. It's, it's, they're both at the publishing now to be printed and everything. The documentary is at the first draft. Um, so we have um, go forward. Um, our daughter, Devoro, has her master's at Hebrew University, um, has research, and she's done an, not a Google research, an archive uh, research within archives in Israel, and we've been to Bulgaria, because it's the story of the Bulgarian Jews. It's the story of Avi's uh, family, father and his family. It's the story of an Orthodox rabbi who was the chief rabbi of Sofia, Bulgaria, 
before World War II and during World War II, uh, a strong rabbinical family. His parents uh, was very, very uh, strong rabbinic rabbi, rabbinical uh, uh, in Thessaloniki, uh, Greece, but they all perished at uh, Treplinka. Um, and his brothers and his sisters, he was in Bulgaria, and how God used him to work with an Orthodox priest called a Steph, uh, Stefan, who, um, Metropolis Stefan, who has a tree buried for him, I mean, uh, planted for him at Yad Vashem. Um, and he's recognized. But Rob Daniel Zion, even though when he died, passed away in 1979, he was given a state uh, burial in Israel. But he's not recognized by the rabbis and if you read the newspaper articles in the 50s, which Devorah read, um, they were attacking him full force and they, his rabbi was taken away from him in Israel. And, but he had a synagogue in Jaffa. And in this synagogue, Avi's family went, his father went particularly, um, but his mother also went. And Avi, as a little boy went, and his sister, Simcha, remembers they were all in this uh, Orthodox synagogue. And Avi's mom, uh, one day, went to the synagogue in the 50s and wanted to commit suicide. And she was sad, and the ra she asked the rabbi, he said, what's wrong with you? He said it to her in Ladino, which is this old, uh, the Spanish Hebrew, like Yiddish, in the Poland and Russia and Germany, you know, the Yiddish. It's, there's also Ladino which is the Spanish and the Hebrew, Old Spanish and, and Hebrew mixed, which uh, his parents and grandparents also spoke. So, um, and he gave her a Brit Hadashah in the, in the synagogue. And so, New Testament, uh, New Te New Testament yeah, to read. And, and, <laughs> thank you. And so, um, what's happened with this book? is that, um, and the research that Devorah did uh, to base the book on, and it's excellent research, uh, a secular publishing company in Israel has accepted the book. This company, this publishing, um, because of its uh, reputation, every book it publishes goes into the National Library in Jerusalem. So therefore, they have decided to publish our book in Hebrew and it will go to the public library in Jerusalem when it's finished. It will also go online to every university in Israel. Also, with that, Yad, at Yad Mordechai, which is a very a famous kibbutz in the 48 in Israeli history in the south, has a museum there. It's not a museum for tourists, it's a museum for Israelis. And Israeli groups go there all the time. High school uh, go there. It's, is considered an exceptional museum in Israel with a high rating. Now they want to give a portion to this rabbi, and they've asked that they could premiere our book. And they know we're Messianic Jews. Now the editor from this company said um, uh, that he, um, he read the research of Devorah. He said, this is excellent research. And see, he checked all of her facts, because he's that their reputation is on the line. Mm -hmm. And he said, when I, I've now turned to the book, but I know the book is true because I read the research. So we're publishing the research also in her name, and then the book is Avi and the documentary. So we're going to, um, oh, this is important. We were invited to Budapest uh, last February. In fact, it was from that point on that I was unable to walk anymore, the uh, severity of the pain was so bad, it happened in Budapest, February, a year was past. And uh, Avi was invited to speak to the Orthodox there by a priest who wanted to know about Bulgarian Jews. We, an Orthodox church, and the Benedictine head of the Benedictine, which I didn't quite know who they were, but other people did, uh, in uh, Hungary, Hungary, um, they came and he said they want this book in Hungarian. Then the Orthodox, the Greek or Bulgarian Orthodox priest, he had a friend who was a rabbi in uh, Budapest. And the rabbi says, I want him to come to the synagogue and speak. 
And so Javi says, that's wonderful. He said, but they need to know who I am. <laughs> I'm not going to just walk into the synagogue surprise. And so the rabbi uh, from Budapest zoomed Avi. He understood we were Messianic Jews. He understood about the book. And he said, I want you to come anyway. And he not only that, he spoke Hebrew. So he said, uh, Avi, you speak in Hebrew. I will translate you into Hungarian. And, it, and we didn't do it in the uh, Bima, at the Bima, or in the synagogue proper, but in the fellowship hall of the synagogue with everyone there. And he had family who had arrived from Israel that week um, that were there. And, and Avi said for all his life, he never dreamed that he would speak in the synagogue. Now, when this book is ready and it's been printed, this rabbi wants to host Avi in Budapest and invite many rabbis. Uh, and and uh, these are not Messianic. These are rabbis and congregations in Budapest for Avi to speak to. And he said, we will, ha we will have the book in the synagogue. Now this isn't, I, I want you to know this is something new that's happening. This is, there's something new that's coming. And it's not anything, only God could do this. None of us can try and do open these doors or do this. So we're going to show you the trailer of the documentary, and then I'm going to ask my daughter, Deborah, to come and share the story with you.